Welcome back to Faster and Louder. All right, we're back. Um, we're gonna be starting on some of those things that I mentioned at the end of my last video. So I guess this is technically part two. It's really like part 39 of, I don't know, 67 something like that just to recap really quickly here um i only have a couple hours i'm just kind of squeezing in some time here at night when i can so i'm gonna update my list here in just a second but this is the old list that i made just probably about a month ago or eh, maybe a little bit longer than that but we're really making a lot of progress here some of these things are already in progress like door hinges uh the transmission next time we i get everybody over we're gonna do the uh, brakes and stuff and then yeah the radiator and cooling lines I'm gonna try to get the fittings for the fuel pump on there right now there's a couple things that aren't on here that um, I'm going to add to my new list and one of those things will be uh, getting these gauges installed and the wiring routed roughly to where I want it so I'll probably get it just routed down to the floorboard and then figure out how I'm gonna get it into the engine bay afterwards I'm going to do something similar with the MSD box. I believe I'm actually going to mount it over here, like underneath the battery a little bit. I've been hearing that uh, one of the easiest ways to prevent those MSD boxes from going bad is to put them near the front where there's a little more airflow. Because you kind of put them back there and it's like a pocket. I just don't want the MSD box getting trapped back there and getting really hot and end up failing. So um, for the purpose of reliability, and you know, just planning things out better. I think I'm gonna put it either down here or over here. I figure over here, cause there's less fluids. So I'm gonna get that on there. I'm gonna try to uh, maybe get a little bit of the wiring done. Um, one of the things I really wanted to do though, there's the actual harness over here. I don't know if you can really see, it. it's kind of dark. There's a lot of connectors in there. I wanna try to make sure they're clean. Probably should have done that before I got the brake booster and all that stuff on there. Might take the hood latch or hood spring whatever off of there so I can get to it better but I'd like to kind of like poke around in there you know maybe use like a wire brush of some kind clean it out and I'll also do the same to the wire harness which I have up in my loft so I'll just make sure all that's clean there's a fuse panel that's under the dashboard I can do the same thing just kind of make sure it's clean um, I do have some I have new headlights I have tail lights I have uh, reverse lights. I have a lot of LED lights, basically. I'm trying to replace a lot of this stuff, at least on the outside of the car, with LEDs because it's brighter. Arizona is a very sunny place, and when you have the sun shining directly on the back, like your taillights, and you have the old incandescent light bulb style, it's just, it's dim, and the sun makes it basically impossible to see and really puts you at risk for getting rear-ended and stuff like that. So I'm trying to avoid that. There's really no rhyme or reason to um, what I'm gonna be doing first. I'm just trying to get done smaller things. So when I get Randy and or Ivan over here to help me, um, we can focus on the harder stuff that actually requires more than one person or you know, it's just overall more difficult. So I'm trying to like knock out some of these smaller stupid things um, on my own time if I can. So let's dig in. What I basically ended up doing for this, um, let's see if we can actually see what we're looking at here. Yeah, it looks a lot cleaner. It's a lot cleaner than it was. It had a bunch of grime and stuff in there. Uh, my phone was kind of acting goofy, so I wasn't able to record the process, but I basically just sprayed it with some degreaser, and I got in here with this like wire brush and kind of scrubbed around, sprayed it a little more, sprayed it with some water, wiped it down, just kind of repeated that process about three times and I blew it out with an air hose a couple times also and now it looks pretty good. Um, I was an idiot and used brake cleaner to try to spray the connectors at first which was a bad idea so now I'm missing a little bit of paint there so I might spritz that really quick with some paint just to have some coverage but uh yeah so that part's done I think I'm just going to repeat that process with the other side of the connector now. This is the other side. This is the actual connector that goes into the pigtail that I was just talking about. So this is pretty gross looking. This is basically what it looked like in the other side before I cleaned it. So I'm just gonna use that process and I think it's gonna work out pretty good on this. 
Um, there are a lot of sockets to clean out here. So I think I'm just gonna go one by one down to the end here and I'm gonna try to spruce them up a little bit. Maybe I'll kind of clean up this uh, wiring a loom if you want to call it that. It basically just looks like a <laughs> ton of electrical tape. <laughs> Lots of scrubbing and spraying later. This is what it looks like. Not too bad. Now to do the rest of it. Well, I don't have any fingerprints left thanks to the harsh chemicals, but uh, you know, this thing, gosh darn it, it looks pretty good. It definitely has some patina to it. Wiring patina, that's gonna be the new thing guys, I'm telling you. There's a little bit of a, you know, discoloration and all that, but you know, all these parts are roughly 50 years old. So I think we need to be nice to it. All right. I wiped it down pretty good. It looks decent. It looks presentable, which is exactly what I was going for. Um, there's a couple spots where the electrical tape, it's exactly what this is, is starting to unravel a little bit. So I'm just going to kind of go over this really quick and you know make sure that it doesn't do that something about this working in a hot shop makes you sweat just got the alternator belt on there so looking good as far as that goes um, a lot of this other stuff is just gonna have to wait until maybe tomorrow well not tomorrow tomorrow's my birthday um, we'll get to it we'll get to it all right I got the MSD box mounted excuse the little flakes of rust and whatnot but uh i mounted it here under the evaporator under the passenger side of the dashboard i just wanted a good place to keep it out of the heat as much as possible but also keep it out of the way so what i'm going to end up doing is probably making a little hole to the left of it here and then put a grommet in the firewall and then just pass it through i had to be careful because there's brake lines on the other side that i want to avoid but that should be right there in that open spot there near the bottom. So it should be perfect. So this thingy with the longer fitting was on this side. The short fitting, this one was on this side. So after that little bit, I realized that I do have um, one of the hoses for the power steering here. So I'm gonna put some Teflon tape, just a little bit on the threads on either side. And well, I'm gonna figure out how everything's gonna get routed first to, before I get too ahead of myself. I believe this side get, goes down on the power steering box down here. Um, but yeah, I'm gonna get that on there really quick if I can. Okay, so this is routed correctly so far, but as you can see, this hose is long as hell. So I'm gonna route this in a way that, you know, looks somewhat decent. I'm glad this is an angle because I was a little worried that this wasn't gonna fit in here but I think it's gonna be okay. The hoses are in there. They fit pretty decently. Uh, let's see. This one actually, it's a little tight, the low pressure hose. I think it's gonna be okay though. It's not like kinked or anything. I'm just being uh, extra aware. <laughs> All right, next day. Um, we got a little bit of time tonight. So I'm going to go ahead and do the power steering belt. So I'm going to whip that on there real quick. Um, I do need to um, make an adjustment so I can actually get the tension on the belt correct. So I will have to deal with that. Hopefully it's not going to be too much of a pain. Um, I think that uh, after that, we'll be good to go on trying to get the radiator in. So. I'm just gonna start with those two things and just see what happens. But um, I do have a lot of those small parts that I need. There's a lower radiator hose um, that I have that's gonna go over here. I have some other parts that I need to bring here and I just got here and realized I forgot them at home. So that's cool. Anyways, I'm gonna go back and get those, then we'll get started. I did get a few other things off the old Amazon and uh, it's not stuff that I'm gonna need right away, 
but I thought it would be really nice to have. Some of this was a birthday present, to uh, thanks to my beautiful wife. Um, this I bought myself, but um, I got a nice a fire extinguisher here. I'm gonna see if there's any way to mount it in front of the seat. I think that would be pretty cool. Let me get this out of the way here. And then this is kind of like a makeshift stereo. Um, I got this idea from somebody on one of the AMC forums on Facebook. Um, this is typically used for marine purposes, like boats. So um, the idea here is you plug this in and then you wire some speakers to it. This is a four channel, so it means um, in my case it would be one on each door and then two in the back. So that's all it can do, but I'm not really going for anything like wild or anything. I'm not, it doesn't have to be a concert in the inside of my car, but if I could hear while I'm driving, that'd be pretty dope. So anyhow, this acts as Bluetooth for your car. So you don't have a head unit or anything with this, which is nice because it allows me to keep the factory look with the factory stereo. Um, this is 500 watts, supposedly. And then I got some matched um, speakers from Rockford Fosgate, which is actually a company here really close in Tempe, Arizona. So this is, this company is literally 30 minutes away from me. But these are five and a quarter inch speakers. So these are the same um, as what's in there from the factory. I'm not going to get into this right now too much. I'll talk more about this in a later video when this is actually more relevant. I just got some random stuff like little shrink things and soldering stuff and speaker wire and all that. So that will be coming up soon. As I said before, I already got the alternator belt on there with no issue. I just got everything loose so I can make some adjustments to the power steering to get it all on there and it was really tight. And at first I didn't realize why, but it's because the belt depth is too wide for the groove on, um, well, I think it's going to be on both of these, which is unfortunate because I have the crank pulley and the belt fits fine on the crank pulley, but then I'm assuming this is a pulley from a Jeep. I'm going to have to look through everything that I have because I might have to find a Jeep application belt for this if that even exists. So yeah, that's gonna be fun. Well, you may have noticed I'm wearing a different shirt again, so that means it's a different night. I didn't record a lot last night because I was pretty pissed off. Um, I had a lot of issues with this belt. So what ended up happening was I took the belt that I got from the vendor, which is actually this one, it's still sitting here. Um, this technically might have worked if I really, really forced it on. But I brought this belt to O'Reilly's and they gave me this belt, the green one that you see right here. And this belt is actually two inches longer than the technical, was technically the correct size. Um, so another thing that's different about this is that it's actually slightly shorter um, from this side to the bottom side. And I think that it actually has something to do, or it, it affects, it would directly affect the pitch of the belt. So these angles on the sides. And it does sit in there slightly better on the water pump and crank pulleys. Anyways, I got all this on here. It fits okay. It was still actually a little bit hard to get on there. So that's fun. But what's really, the awesome part about this is I stupidly took this bolt off thinking I needed to do that to adjust this, adjust the tension. Don't know why I thought that, but now I can't get it off. So what that means is I get to take the pulley off and the belt, which was hard to get on there. So it's going to be hard to get off. Got to basically take all this stuff loose so I can put that stupid bolt back on. And I'm not doing that today because I don't want to, I don't want to be instantly mad <laughs> so what i'm gonna do is start working on some more of the wiring i'm gonna try to well i have a i have a terminal that i have to find it's actually the one that goes from the engine to the cross member supposedly so 
I need to look for that. Um, I also need to, oh, actually, never mind. I thought that this was going to a painted surface here, the one that I have going from the ground terminal on a battery to the head here. Then I'm gonna start working on the actual wiring harness, trying to figure out like what's supposed to be connected where, try to get this figured out a little bit so maybe I can get power to the inside. And uh, I don't know, I'm just gonna take it step by step. I don't have a whole lot of time, but I'll, I'll see what I can get done. I have a new shirt on so you can only guess one thing. Last time didn't go so well. I got everything mostly wired up, or at least I thought so, until I looked at the actual wiring diagram, like I probably should have done in the first place. And I realized that I forgot a ground on the firewall. Now, I'm not claiming that that's gonna fix it, because I really doubt that it is, but there's a couple grounds here, or little loops here really close to the, I guess I'd just call this a bulkhead. Uh, I'm not entirely sure what these connect to. I don't know if, no, I'm not really sure. There's probably just a bolt hole somewhere. I don't know. It's supposed to go somewhere. Maybe that'll fix my problems. Like I said, I kind of doubt it. But um, the one thing that was working was the horn relay. So every time I press the horn, I probably... It should do it now too. Oh wait, no, I have it disconnected, sorry. It would do it if I had the battery connected, for sure. But anyways, the horn relay clicks. So I have power all the way through there. Um, I did try to figure out what was actually lighting up on the harness itself when I was checking, and I can't really tell. And I don't know. I couldn't find the diagram right away, so I'm going to look in my book now while I'm waiting for Ivan and or Randy to get here. But the priority, I'm just going to keep this short. The priority for today is um, getting the axle out. Uh, I need to get the entire axle out, which means, you know, obviously having to disconnect the leaf springs and all that good stuff. So um, I need to get that out and then we need to get it loaded into the back of the truck because tomorrow I am going to try to drop off the axle. So that has to happen at some point and all the stuff that goes with it. Then um, with whatever time we have left, I'm gonna just start trying to figure out some stuff with the wiring here. Um, <laughs> any little bit closer I can get to um, some sort of anything with lights going on here would be handy. I do know there's, I think, I'm gonna have to figure this out. I'm not sure if this is for the dome light. I think it goes back here. I don't know, I don't know where this goes, this harness, and I don't know where it connects to in the front, so I'm pretty puzzled about that. Probably should have labeled it or something when I started taking everything apart, but you know, you start ripping things apart because you're trying to do something else and you're just like, ah, whatever, I'll figure it out. And now I get to figure it out, so that's cool. That's what we're gonna start with today. I'm just gonna see what kind of progress can be made with that. All right, so we are in the process of taking the axle out and Ivan's gonna try to bench press this and see if he can. It's gonna hit you in the head. <laughs> oh, he only got one side up. You didn't do it on the other? I don't think so. Do it you again. Sit there. Do it again. <laughs> Three times, man. <laughs> Three reps. Get one more rep in. Ah. No, just barely on the left side. Probably not the most safe thing not to bad do. for an old man. <laughs> we, we only have one part of the <laughs> mount. The, it's like, <laughs> just like slamming it back down onto the leaf springs. Oh, <laughs> uh, yep. This is why men don't live very long. So, yeah, I can't remember if I said in this video or not, but the reason why we're taking this out is because um, it's getting 373 gears, the differential is getting rebuilt. And uh, it's getting one piece of rear axles. Yeah. It's gonna fall back. Yeah, is everything clear? Oh, God. Falls? Okay. Go. Cool. Well, we could put the wheels on it. That's what I was saying, just put the jack stands underneath the axles and then pop them loose and then no. just let it down. Hold on. Put the wheels on it. Why? And then it'll roll. Well, it'll... No, just put the jacks under the axle tubes. Because the jack stands are being used. No, I have two more. The front's on the ground. Oh, where are they? <laughs> I was wondering why you're doing it this way. They're over here. 
<laughs> Just <laughs> going for like maximum I difficulty. And it's crusty glory. It's gonna look a lot prettier here pretty soon. Dan got a rear end neck to me. Um, I went to get some lunch and Ivan fixed this bolt down here. Actually, I need to tighten it back up now that I'm looking at it. I already tightened it back here. Lunch? Got the belt. He got us. Ivan got a snack. Don't listen to him. He has some French fries. Actually, I'm probably gonna have the the ones in the bottom of the bag. Tighten it up. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> Uh, what do you think about this tightness? Isn't there like supposed to be some sort of gauge that you're supposed to? Yeah, well, it's a measurement, like an inch, yeah. depending on what the span is, yeah. how far down. Uh, need to be a little tighter than that. That's what I was Actually, thinking. That's good, though. I mean, that's good that it's loose. Okay, I'm gonna tighten that up. And he's then, gonna uh, tighten that up. I'm gonna try and set the car on fire. Yeah, he's over here with a blowtorch. No, yeah, it's a torch, regardless. Away from the plastic. Classic is overrated. Catches a hole inside of the oh, car. Arms are going. I know. And I was just using like penetrant stuff inside the car, so. Penetrant's not explosive. It's not explosive. It's not flammable. Basically, still trying to get this stupid pin out of here. Uh, he tried drilling a little bit of the top. Um, it would be preferred if we could tap it out, so then we know that it's not going to be making the pin hole bigger. So we can actually use the pin that I bought already. But um, I'm just going to see how this works. If it doesn't work, then we're going to get in on the inside, try to and just remove the entire hinge. So that's pretty much the only option <laughs> if this doesn't work. Smoking. This is a no smoking car. Good thing there's no smoke detector in here. Yes. Harbor Freight Hammer, snap on punch. <laughs> they work together in harmony. <laughs> yes, they do. <laughs> awesome. Shit. Where is it? <laughs> so burn my carpet. <laughs> Jesus. <laughs> okay, it's alright. There's too much rust on it for it to touch yeah. the carpet. Haha. -ha. <laughs> <laughs> Can you take that one and unbolt it? That one will unbolt, but okay. I mean I don't know if that's gonna make it easier. Yeah, because I'll take it to work again. Well, this just has bolts on the inside. Okay, let me take it to work and heat it and uh, punch it out that way. Nice. Making progress here. Feels good after several days of punching myself in the face. We just watched my own video to help me. <laughs> We're trying to figure out where the fuel line is actually ran on the bottom of the car. Um, sounds like uh, Ivan was able to find what he needed in my gas tank replacement video. So if you haven't watched that yet, check that out. Great, great video, great video. <laughs> Very, <cool. laughs> Very informative. So um, while he was doing that, I just took the bottom hinge off right here. Um, he's actually going to take that to his work and he's going to probably just do that much easier with uh, more tools that are equipped for this type of thing. So. He's going to do that. Um, we already showed we got this pin out. Uh, we may have to kind of clean this up. I think the pin, the or the bushing, I mean, is actually still in the top, possibly. It's a little tighter, 
on that top one. Maybe not. I don't know. It could just be tighter than the bottom. <laughs> I, don't, I don't know. But uh, we got that figured out, so that's good. That'll be ready to go, hopefully, for next time. Um, one thing that I've been kind of putting on a back burner today, um, I'll show this really quick. I actually threw this in here because I was going to blast this, but this is like the adjuster. This, this bolts to the actual door on the inside, and it basically goes on the door on the inside of the hinge here, and this is used to move around for adjustment. So you can actually adjust it on the door instead of on the body. You can do both. You can adjust on the body or the door, but they make this so you can do this on the door, and it's a lot easier because there's a lot of stuff in the way, especially on the passenger side. Thankfully, the passenger hinges are still pretty nice, so we're not gonna worry about that. But I'm gonna blast that really quick. I'm gonna paint it up. Another thing that I think I forgot to mention earlier is I fought getting the fuse panel, the fuse block out. Um, I think that it was probably part of my problem with not having any lights or anything on a dash. It's not 100% for sure just yet, but uh, I'm gonna show you guys what it looks like. Look how corroded this is. <laughs> these, these black specks are actually from when I was trying to use the wire wheel to get the tar off. <laughs> so that's what that's from. But um, there, there's a big bracket, big connector here that goes on all these blades right here. And I was trying to get it off and it would not come off and broke all these blades here. So I need a brand new one of these. This one is in really bad shape. So I think that it might work a little bit better with a new panel. I don't know, just, just a guess. Just guessing here. I actually found a member on the Facebook group who was willing to sell me a new one of these and some wiring for like 20 bucks. So thank you very much for that help. You know who you are. Thanks. All right, so here is the rear axle. It's very dark out here, but uh, this is going to the shop tomorrow to get totally rebuilt. I'm still debating whether I should get a new differential cover or not. I think that I'll be okay with that one. Maybe just blast it and put it back on there. Something, I don't know, I haven't decided. The rear axle is dropped off. They said it would be um, probably about next week when I get it. They did say that they might be able to increase the preload on the clutch pack, which is part of the reason why these are notorious for wearing out so quickly. I don't know if they're actually gonna do it or not. I asked them if there's something besides, or like something between the factory setting and um, like chirping in tires when you go around a corner and they seem to kind of like brush me off like whatever idiot like it's not how it works man like I don't know <laughs> they, they basically just brush me off though when I asked that so uh, I guess we'll see hopefully I have all the correct parts and everything and they don't need anything else even if it does take a few weeks though, it's not gonna hurt my feelings because there's plenty to do on the Javelin. So that's basically it for this time. I'm gonna be recording as much as I possibly can throughout the week. Um, I don't think that we're all gonna be meeting up this weekend. So I'm just gonna do as much as I can in the next couple weeks and we'll pick back up from there. And I wanted to give a big shout out to the member of the group on Facebook for uh, sending me the new fuse panel and everything. I really appreciate it. It's stuff like this that really makes me love being part of the car community in general. It's cool stuff like that. It makes me, uh, makes me pump to work on the car. Um, makes me feel good as a human being. <laughs> I really thank you all guys. Um, if you, if you like this video, Please subscribe, please like the video, leave a comment. I appreciate all the support, guys. Until next time, later.